What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake and in one of our recent videos we mentioned some third-party plugins that Kazi and I use quite frequently on some of our professional projects and there were several comments asking us to dig a little bit deeper into those plugins so that's exactly what today's video is all about. Today we're going to be doing an overview on the three third-party plugins that Kazi and I use constantly on our professional projects and a little cherry on top if you're an FCM member you're going to get some serious discounts on each of them. Also we recently did a survey and the majority of you regardless of skill level are struggling with shot matching, balancing, skin tones, and working with 8-bit footage. So we created a one hour long free training that covers all of this. Plus we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades, and some of our personal LUTs. So you definitely don't wanna miss out on this training. Get yourself signed up by clicking that link down below. And also guys, if you're enjoying the content, please be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and be sure to follow us on Instagram. And with that, let's roll the intro. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into this one, guys. So in Kazi's last video, he mentioned some of the third-party plugins that we use on nearly every project we work on. So in the comments in that last video, a lot of you were asking to see uh, a little bit deeper dive into what those plugins do, how they operate, um, what they're capable of. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly that. We're not just gonna be doing it on one clip. What I've actually done here is I've taken four clips and I've gone ahead and just converted them from their camera space to Rec. 709. It's not how I would do it in a real world project. It'll allow us to work in a group post clip uh, node, just in one node using each plugin on its own. Um, and we can just bounce around and then see how it affects each clip. So this first clip is from a red. This one is from Black Magic. This is shot on Arya Mira. And then I think this is red as well. Um, so a little bit of a range there. You kind of like the Komodo range, the $6,000 camera. You got the cheap $1,200 camera. And then you've also got the uh, twenty and forty thousand dollars cameras there. So quite a big range there. Uh, and I just wanted to do this to demonstrate that like it, the camera does not matter here. These plugins will work with any camera, any footage really. The last node in each of these clips is taking our camera space into Rec. Seven or Nine. And so then in our uh, group post clip node, we're going to be applying some of these third party plugins and the input for all of them is gonna be Rec. 709. And like I mentioned, that's not exactly how I'd prefer to, uh, to apply these in a real world project, but it's more of just for, for this tutorial specifically, this is an optimized method. So uh, we're gonna be setting the input for each of these plugins as Rec. 709. So the three plugins we're gonna be looking at today is Dehancer, Film Convert Nitrate, and then Look Designer. Um, so we'll start off with Look Designer. That's one I find myself going to most often recently. Uh, it's very well optimized. And uh, we're gonna go from Look Designer to Film Convert Nitrate and then Dehancer. So we're just gonna go from bottom to top. So look designer, we're gonna drag that on here and you'll see the OFX, once it applies, uh, is going to populate over here in the OFX tab, same as any other built-in Resolve OFX. And right off the bat, it makes everything look pretty harsh and that's because the input profile is by default gonna be in RE log C, but we wanna go ahead and because we're inputting uh, Rec. 7 or 9, we're gonna set this to Rec. 7 or 9 IDT, meaning the input device transform. And so then the output profile is Rec. 7 or 9 ODT. So without messing with any of the parameters, you see nothing changes whatsoever in the waveform there. Um, but in Look Designer, you're gonna have your gamut limiter, which I rarely touch, uh, printer lights, which are gonna be super handy as kind of working as your offset there. And then you have your lift, gamma, and gain kind of laid out in the same format, your overall lift, which is gonna be your lift. Uh, and then you have your red lift, green lift, and blue. Uh, so yeah, you have your printer lights, lift, gamma, and gain. And then you also got subtractive color, which if you don't know what subtractive color is, I won't go too in depth here, but one quick way to demonstrate is if you look over at the waveform, if we add cyan, we are adding cyan by reducing red and then proportionally increasing uh, the green and blue channels. So obviously if you mix blue and green at the right ratio, you get cyan. And so instead of adding cyan to the image, we're subtracting red at a desired uh, proportion. After subtractive color, you've also got push and pull, which is another method for exposure, but you'll see it does apply this in a different way. Um, I don't usually adjust my exposure too much using the push and pull. I will usually do it in a node prior using offsets, but I believe this is to relate a little bit more similarly to film characteristics. And then temperature is pretty self-explanatory here. Increase temperature, subtract temperature. Uh, and this does also do a very good job of not taking it too far. It doesn't compress all the colors. Like I mentioned, the actual temperature slider will in Resolve. Uh, so it's a very subtle effect and it's a clean, 
temperature shift in my opinion next is saturation and again this is one of those tools that it's built in it's nice if you want to handle everything here in look designer and the other big benefit here is that you can export LUTs uh, from look designer so all the changes you make if you wanted to export that as a LUT you can do so so really that would be the only reason and the only time I would go to uh, push pull temperature and saturation is if I'm needing to create all of this within one node uh, that'd be in the look designer node and then export it as its own LUT so now we get into the actual film characteristics here. They have the negative stock, the negative stock Gen 2, and then major and minor. So I usually go with negative stock Gen 2, and one of my favorites is Agfa XTR 250. And you'll notice when I selected that, not much changed. You can, however, adjust the negative intensity. And for Agfa, I mean, sometimes I will crank this negative intensity all the way up to one, uh, which would be 100%. And you can also bypass it just right there to see the changes that it's actually making. And it's a very clean, uh, negative in my opinion. And then you've also got 5219, which is a little bit more natural. You notice not as much as being affected there. But the thing about look designers right now, we're only affecting the negative options and the positive, which would be the print LUT is essentially just direct 709. There's not actually a print LUT uh, being applied here, but in the print options, that's where you can choose your own. And so there's tons of options here. And of course, for the contrast option, I typically lean with 2383. 2393 is a little bit more modern version of that. It came out later. Um, so 2383, if we select that one, you'll see the contrast intensity. You can modify that here. And I usually pull this back just a touch. And then for the print stock, we'll select, there's actually a few different options for the 2383. Um, I usually go with average or modern. And so for modern, we can increase that print intensity. And so now we've got you know this effect here by adding that 2383 and the print options. So pretty neat effect there. And then for post-processing, we have FPE and ENR. And uh, in a way, this is kind of like a, a really clean bleach bypass. Uh, not a tool that I go to a lot either, um, but you know when the job calls for it, it's there. And so if I enable that and disable that, another very cool look. Uh, so then you have some test images and we'll get into that if we go you know, specifically into a, a full-on look designer breakdown in the future. Um, but for now, we're just gonna leave that as is. And so before and after, that's the look we created with look designer, just kind of messing around, really didn't set anything intentionally, just showing you guys some of the common settings I use. So we'll go ahead and grab a still for this look, and then we will reset this. Actually, before we reset that, let's go ahead and see this look kind of applied across all these other shots here. And one thing you may notice is that even though we have this awesome kind of filmic look here, we aren't seeing any grain um, or film emulation technically. It's really just a, it's a really clean uh, filmic look. So if you wanted to add glow, grain, halation, um, all of that would have to be done outside of uh, the look designer node. So that's the only limitation there. They do make, you know, Grain Lab is another grain plugin they make. Um, but I, I tend to go to other plugins for that and I'll be showing you guys uh, the tools I use for grain coming up here in just a second. So that's just a quick look here at what this look does on the other generic shots that I've selected. And you'll see I only graded this shot, but it's just being applied to everything else. And of course it works pretty well. So that's one of the biggest benefits is just the speed you have when grading with some of these plugins. They kind of do a lot of the grunt work for you and just lets you work on the art of it all. So we'll go ahead and reset that since we've grabbed our still and we're going to, go on to film convert nitrate now. So when you first drag it on, it's set by default to rec 709 input and output. So we don't have to adjust anything there, but in general, the film convert plugin is going to be a lot more simple and we can walk through it much quicker up here at the top in the camera settings we have, you know, where you can actually select the camera you're using. And then that would also allow exposure, temp, tint, and saturation to all be a little bit more accurate um, and give a little more pleasing result based on the camera you're, you've shot the footage with. So next up we have the film settings and you have a few different options of film stocks. So you start off by default at 5207 Vision 3, and so I'll switch it to 5213 Vision 3, which is another favorite of mine. And the film size, you know, you can select a whole bunch of different options here, just kind of further customizing. What and so the film size also does affect the grain settings. And the grain settings, you have a few more options uh, to modify that independently here. You can change the strength, the size, saturation, and the image softness. So all very kind of, uh, similar to the built-in resolve grain OFX. effects. Uh, then you also have the levels and <laughs> I really don't mess with this much at all, but this would be another way to kind of uh, affect lift gamma and gain. And it's a little more harsh, so you gotta be more careful, but it also does allow for a little bit more manipulation. 
So that's a quick rundown just of what you're going to see in Film Convert Nitrate. And again, drop a comment down below if you want to see each plugin specifically broken down and shown everything about it. Uh, and then maybe recreate some looks with it uh, just to show you what each one is capable of because they are really powerful. There's no way to go over all they can do just in one video. So that's Film Convert Nitrate. And then I'll go ahead and bounce around. We can check out uh, some of the different looks we've got here. Um, not a whole lot going on. I think it could stand a little more saturation. So we'll just kind of increase that a bit there. So we'll go ahead and grab that still and we'll reset this. So now I move on to the final plugin, which is Dehancer Pro 5, uh, the Beta 7 Build 4. And here, boy, this one, this one's really powerful. The only downside is that it's so powerful. It does so much work. Uh, it can slow down your machine. So this is one you might need a little bit more of a beefy workstation to run smoothly. Um, of course, if you don't have that beefy workstation, you can turn on uh, in your playback. You can turn on your render cache, set it to smart or user. Um, I'm just gonna set it to smart for now, which is gonna say, hey, if we can't play this back at full full speed, let's go ahead and cache this. So that's, that's a great little tip if you're running on a slower machine. Uh, and then whenever you press play, it should play pretty smoothly. Uh, timeline proxy mode, you can also set that to quarter or half resolution. Um, I'd recommend keeping that off if you can, but you know, if you really need to get full speed playback, it's an option. So Dehancer also expects uh, Rec 709 by default, and you can adjust that here. You can set it to Rec 2020, anything Aces, DaVinci Wide Gamut, Cineon Film Log, or you can choose your camera, similar to uh, the Color Space Transform, where you just have your camera input and then you set your output. So it's really helpful that they also have some of these other options. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to be sure you're inputting the proper feed uh, or signal into the actual plugin here. So because we've converted this clip already to Rec. 709, we're gonna leave the source as Rec. 709 as we move on. And similar to the other ones, you're gonna see that temperature, tint, and then defringe and defringe radius, which I usually don't mess with these too much because again, I'm doing most of my correction in a different node, but nonetheless, those tools are still there and available. So the first tab is the film tab. And the film tab is essentially operating as your film negative. So basically what film stock would you have shot this with in camera? And I, I honestly, I do like the ACFA stocks. They are some of my favorites. There's obviously a ton of uh, film stocks here you can choose from, some black and white, some Kodachrome, some Ektachrome. I think there's a couple of Ektachromes in here. Yeah, Kodak Ektachrome uh, E100 2017. Yeah, I actually really did like the Aero Color, uh, Aero Color 4 125. And you can disable that there. And so now you're just getting that Rec. 709 look, but then there's that film negative. Um, and you also have your push and pull. And then you also have your push and pull. I usually leave that as is. Um, but yeah, for if you're looking for a wide variety of options there, I think Dehancer might have the most um, negatives followed by Look Designer. Um, don't quote me on that. I have to double check. But I mean, there's there's a lot here, obviously, as you can see. So for this example, I think we're either going to use Ektachrome or Aero Color. And I really like Aero Color. That's just, it stands out to me. Um, so we're going to go with that one. So then you have in the Expand tab, you have your Black Point, which you can increase or reduce. Uh, and then same for the White Point. And... For the color mode, you've got Luma and Normal, and I won't go really into much detail on what these do right now, um, but it's really just a black point and white point correction tool. But if you want more in-depth information on, again, all of these tools and what they all do, let me know in the comments and we will do a plugin by plugin video showing each one, all the tools in depth, and then using them to create uh, various looks. Uh, here we're just kind of flying through everything and I'm sort of just selecting things at random. Uh, so for print, here we have a profile option, and this is what's only found in the beta version. Um, it will be in Dehancer Pro 5 whenever that comes out, but we're going to select 2383 print film, and that's going to be our 2383 print LUT, the positive LUT. And right now there's not a whole lot of options, but I, I really do expect them to expand that beyond the 2383 print film LUT. Even though it's the most popular, there are still others that are commonly used. So I would not be surprised if they brought in new print LUTs in you know, a later version of this beta or in the full version of the Dehancer Pro 5. But for this one, we're gonna go ahead and select that 2383 tonal contrast. Here, obviously you can increase or decrease that contrast that's applied through that print LUT. You've also got your target white point and this, you can kind of think of this as uh, white balance. So if you go all the way left, you're gonna see it gets a little bit warmer. And if we go all the way right, it gets cooler. And I do kind of like that in between, but just kind of sitting a little bit closer to cool. And then you've got another exposure adjustment here, which we can kind of leave that as is. Uh, color density, this is a really neat tool because you see like at her hair, her lips and the greens in the background, you'll see how they just go from like really flat and muted to super, super dense. Um, so that's a really cool effect there as well. And then you've got an analog range limiter and I won't even go into it, but 
obviously turning that on makes it look a little bit more analog because we don't have as deep of blacks and we don't have as white as whites. And then we have the color head tab, and this is also kind of back to that subtractive color model, um, but you see they do apply it a little bit differently. Uh, I think they both look good. They just have their own style. So uh, if you're asking like, which one should I use? Just try it and whichever one you like more, use that one. And then you have a few more parameters here just to adjust um, how these tools are operating on the image. Uh, so next up we have film grain. Right now it's enabled, so you're already kind of looking at that. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see a little more in depth of what this is doing. See, we can adjust the size, the amount, and of all the grains I've used in a plugin, uh, Dehancers is probably the best, and it may also be one of the most intense. So uh, you do have that trade-off there. You can turn the chroma up so you can kind of see uh, the saturation of that grain. Um, but I mean, it, it really does look very authentic and very real. So next up we have halation, so we can turn that on and you'll see it doesn't do too much there. If we turn on mask mode, we can see exactly where it's actually applying that effect. And we don't really have it applying it anywhere right now. So we have to adjust some parameters here. We can go to our local diffusion and then global and try and grab some more of the image there. And then by turning off mask mode, we're actually gonna see the halation be applied to the image. So if I disable it now, you see it really coming in on these edges over here. So that's halation. And you've also got bloom, which when you turn this on, you see it kind of does add that nice soft blooming effect into the highlights. And all of these tools can be done just natively in Resolve, probably just not as authentically as this because there's a lot more going on uh, inside this plugin that makes it look and feel so much more realistic uh, and more analog. So now if you are interested in seeing how to achieve all these effects using Resolve's built-in tools, I do have a video up here in the top right corner. So moving on from bloom, we have the vignette. Um, here, pretty simple. You all know what a vignette is. It's that kind of darkening around the edges. And then we have film breath, and this is a very useful uh, tool. I'm so glad they added it in here. It's not turned up too heavy right now, but if you increase the exposure, uh, see if we can play it through. Essentially what it does is it kind of flickers the exposure, emulating more of that real film look. Um, so that's film breath there. We'll turn that off. And then we also have gate weave, which is going to kind of shift the film up and down uh, and just give it more of that that realistic look as if it was being run through a scanner uh, where every frame isn't you know, precisely in the same place as the frame before um, because it's analog. So this just allows you to add that much more authentic filmic characteristics and you can apply them with a click of a button and then adjusting some sliders. So it almost makes it too easy. Uh, lastly, you have false color and then we have the output and that's the total impact slider. And this is gonna kind of operate as a global blend or just an opacity slider, the sum of everything we've put here. So pulling this back you can reduce it to nothing. And now it's like this node doesn't exist. And then full intensity at hundred percent, you see it's full intensity. Um, so if we wanted to kind of go too heavy and it can pull it back a little bit, right around 85% looks pretty nice. And then you've got a LUT generator where you can export everything you've done here uh, as a LUT. And obviously it won't export everything because you can't export gate weave or film breath or vignetting or bloom or halation as a LUT. Uh, or grain for that matter. Um, but a lot of the the color shifts, all of that can be exported as a LUT. Now let's see how Dehancer worked on a lot of these other clips. Looks fantastic here, looks fantastic here. We've really got some serious halation going on. And then we've got this this shot, which looks super clean. So that is a full breakdown of the Dehancer plugin. We'll go ahead and grab a still here. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and disable this and we'll pull up a four by grid of all the different plugins here. We have our Rec 709 image over here on the top left. And then we have Look Designer here in the top right, which looks great. We don't have any grain or halation on this one. Not a whole lot of real film effects. This one's really just, um, I guess, more of a digital aspect of film emulation. It's just the, the colors being shifted here. But then moving on in the bottom left, we have uh, Film Convert Nitrate. And here we start getting into more of the filmic looks. Uh, we've got a little more going on. We've got some more, uh, a little bit more glowing. We have obviously the film grain and you can turn off the film grain if you want to, but sometimes I'll just use Look Designer to create the film look I'm going for. And then I'll use uh, Film Convert Nitrate to apply the grain afterwards if I do need that grainy effect. And then you have uh, the final one, which is Dehancer. And that's in the bottom right. And that kind of covers all the bases. It's got all the OFX, uh, all the glow, the halation, the grain. And then you also have an awesome selection of film negatives and film prints uh, that you can apply, mix and match all of those. And they do look absolutely outstanding. All of them look great. They all offer excellent tools and excellent results. It really just depends on how you're using them and what you're using them for. They're all priced a little bit differently. But again, don't forget if you're an FCM student, you get discounts on every single one of them. So last thing I'm gonna do is let's just go ahead and reset everything here. And we're gonna jump into our clip node and we're gonna see how this compares to the built-in Resolve uh, film print LUTs they have there. So we don't really need to change anything here except for our output gamma. We're gonna set this to Cineon Film Log. So we're gonna Alt S, add a new node. 
and then right click. And then in LUT, we're gonna scroll over to Film Looks and we're gonna select Rec. 709 Kodak 2383 D60. Now the benefit of going with this route is that it's 100% free. Um, there's no additional plugins required. It's all built into Resolve, whether it's the free version or the paid version. Um, you also have great playback speed, but the downside is you don't have individual uh, parameters to adjust that would let you control the intensity of the film print characteristics without modifying the actual contrast properties that it applies as well. So that's where those plugins come in handy. You get a whole lot more refinement uh, and customization of you know, which prints you want to use, which negatives you want to use, and it allows you to create tons more options much quicker. So by working more quickly, giving your clients more options, you do a better job, you're working quicker, time is money, you're making more money. So it's of course worth all of that investment up front. So that's gonna be it for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys all the different options we've gone through today and let you judge for yourself which one you like best. All right, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And of course, don't forget to check out the free training link down below. As I said, it's one of our best we've put out yet, and it's completely free. So with that, I will see you guys in the next one.